The following production is part of the Play Some Video Games Podcast Network. Hello, boys and girls. <laughs> oh, it's a good day to see you once again. This episode of PSVG will have some delicious spoilers. So, if you haven't already played the game, then you may want to steer clear. Unless, of course, you're like me and you just want to have it all. In that case, enjoy. and girls to the final episode who was that that wasn't it's was kind of jokerish <laughs> kind of emperorish i'm not sure what happened there but this is the batman the telltale batman uh review cast with me nathan and my cohort in crime or the other half of the dynamic duo kevin austin welcome well, who gets to be robin because that's very important you know, we're actually going to just go ahead and skip the Robin, and we're just going to go straight to Nightwing. Okay, I'm cool either way then. That's fair. <laughs> so, <laughs> the uh, the episode that we're going to be talking about here is, like I said, the final episode of the Telltale Season 2, The Enemy Within. This one titled, Same Stitch. Um, overall, this uh, episode is going to be, you know, obviously spoilers, so watch out for those. But uh, we'll kind of discuss the episode, and then we'll discuss the season as a whole and give our final thoughts on this season and what we might want for the future. So, dear listener, join us as we discuss Batman, The Enemy Within, Season 2, Episode 5, Same Stitch. Kevin! Nathan! This this, uh, was the final episode. It was. And as such, we had some stuff that needed to be pay out, paid off. We had some uh, some loose story ends that we were wanting to get tied. And I want to just kind of know, overall, you know, we'll discuss it when we get there, but did, did, this, did this do it for you? It definitely completed the story. Um, how I feel it was left off and then reflecting back on the entire season as a whole, I'm not sure I'm as pleased with it as season one, but we can talk about that later, I guess. So there's a little foregleam into the mind of Kevin. Or actually, I'm going to call him Kiev in this episode. For no <laughs> Kiev. the reason. Uh, if you're in our Discord, you'll, you'll see why, I think. Maybe, I don't know. Anyway, so this episode starts off with... Um, the Joker has got his people over at the old lair of the Riddler, and they have the that water tower thing. They got the Joker stuff there, like Welcome Agency Pigs was a banner um, to kind of lure out the agency. So they're following straight into the Joker's trap. Um, best thing, not best thing, but the thing I really liked about this spot here is when you get into uh, get into it, the agency is just going to put down Joker's thugs. Uh, no remorse, right? And you step in, you're mm-hmm. like, no, this isn't cool. And then you're about to actually go down, and then the Joker swings in. Yeah. And when he swings in, I'm just like, are you serious? This is hilarious. What did you think about that when he swings into the rescue? It was cool. Now, I think we both, and we didn't play through twice to really know what's going on, but we both ended up with the vigilante Joker at the end, right? Correct. Okay, so I'm wondering if it's any different if you have it the other way around. But, yeah, it was just a great, like, moment that he just came swinging in and you almost feel a little proud because this is what telltale did very, very well in writing here is making you like the Joker, even though you know, you probably shouldn't, but these little moments like this is like, you're applauding the Joker, which just doesn't seem right. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, this whole season has been kind of just flipping on its head. What you think of the Joker, right? Totally. So the Joker is basically aping Batman all the way around. He's 
swinging in. He's throwing Joker rings, like little teeth that look like batter rings. <laughs> yeah. He's got the smoke bombs that are pink or purple instead of, you know, the typical smoke bombs. He's got, even got his own grappler gun and everything. Mm-hmm. So we see him come in as the Joker, like full on, right? And he's referring to himself as the Joker. Yes. Uh, when he reveals that, you get a chance to, to talk to him and be like, what do you think of the name? Uh, do you recall what you what you said to that? If you enjoyed it, if you thought it was a bad joke or whatever it was, I I encouraged it. I don't remember what the exact uh, choices were, but I know I didn't put it down. I was like, hey, I like that. Or it has a nice ring to it, or whatever it was there. Mm-hmm. Uh, did you do the same, or did you kind of? I think I said I liked it. Uh, yeah, just kind of, in, you know, encouraging it, but not like going crazy. Um, but Bane comes in. They they bring in the agency asset Bane in this, and then you and the Joker are fighting him together, and th- that just was weird. Like fighting side by side with the Joker, doing yeah, uh, doing the vigilante stuff. I thought that that was weird, but oddly fun. Like it was really, I was enjoying it the whole time. Mm-hmm. Um, who did you save between the agent guy or the Joker's guy when I Bane see. ran towards him? Yeah, I saved the Joker's guy, Willie, over uh, Agent Harrison, just kind of continuing that whole trend I've had throughout the season of kind of bucking against the agency, probably since, like, episode two or three. I kind of just stopped cooperating with the agency whenever I could. Like, at first, I I took it easy, and I think you kind of did the same thing in the first episodes. I kind of eased into that relationship. But once you kind of knew what Waller was up to, I just always went went against her whenever possible. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, in this particular episode, my, my motivation behind that was because what, we saw them about ready to just shoot all these guys that mm-hmm. were unarmed a second ago. Yeah. And then they were about to take down Batman for trying to stop him. So I was like, nah, these guys are in the right. You guys are just totally, like, out of line. So that's that was my reasoning for, for that particular choice. What about when when the you had the option to drop a smokestack on Bane or use the Joker's car? I, I chose to drop the smokestack because I like Joker's car. I was like, I'm not going to wreck his car. Do you remember which one you chose? I dropped the smokestack, too. And I did it, I think, more just because I figured if anything was going to stop being, the smokestack was more likely to uh, put him down. So I, I, that's why I went that route. But, yeah, the Joker's car was uh, – he took some care with that for sure. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> after this scene – we we go to the the bat cave with the Joker, and the way that we get there is uh, when the Batmobile comes. Oh yeah, the Joker sees and he's like, oh, "Are we going to play the Batmobile?" And then it cuts into him inside the Batmobile. He's like, "We're inside the Batmobile." <laughs> yeah. It remind me like of um, how the Joker acts in the Lego Batman movie. If you've seen that, it's very like childlike. It was it was a great scene. I, I think I actually laughed out loud when that happened. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I thought that was pretty great. I I enjoyed that. Um, it made me laugh out loud, literally. Mm-hmm. And then we had the scene with Alfred when he came in to help stitch up Batman, and so the Joker was kind of seeing like how the how much damage Batman sustains. He's like, "This is you know normal." He's like, mm, "Kind of," because he was basically like stitching himself up. And then the yep. Joker had like a little paper cut or something, and he wanted uh, Alfred <laughs> to attend to it. Yes, that's right. <laughs> I mean, the, the Joker is pretty fantastic in, in this episode. The writing was spot on, the acting was spot on, and just everything played for me just for this wacky character and this rendition of the Joker. It's working for me. How about you? It, it totally worked because it's very it, – like I said, I don't know what they did or how they did this. This is the first time I've cared about the Joker and his thoughts. He's almost childlike in his awe and like idolization of, of Bruce Wayne and Batman. So the, this whole episode – for the most part, is just more of like that wonder. Like you said, the Batmobile, seeing what Alfred can do, and Alfred stitching him up, and this happens all the time, and he just wants to be a part of that world that Batman is in so badly, and it, it comes across very well in, in the episode, in the, in the in the writing and the acting. Mm-hmm. So we, in this episode, uh, we get the, the information about Waller. We meet with uh, the agent on the rooftop, and she gives you the information that can burn Waller and you can finally confront her and have something to utilize against her because she has your identity. She knows that Batman is Bruce Wayne and she's threatened to relay that information out to the world. But the agent that helps you, you have the option to be kind to her, tell her to get out of Gotham, tell her to come work for you, 
Um, or it can just be like, no, I'll convince Waller to keep your job. Which option did you choose? Do you call? I encourage her to come work for me. Are we just playing the same thoughts on this whole whole thing? I think we had some divergence <laughs> at the beginning, but like ever since then, I think we've been pretty close to our. our... Yeah, I, I think since episode three, we've been pretty much in line with almost everything. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I, I chose the same choice, obviously. Um, and then Waller comes out, and she has Bane with her. She has Catwoman with her, and Harley. Yep. Yep. Uh, and I thought it was interesting that Catwoman was with her. It was kind of an interesting ploy because mm. uh, I think we were both soft on Selena as well. Yep. Yes. So, what was your choice when you when you had the option to, you know, tell Waller let Selena go, Harley goes to jail, or uh, leave the agent alone? Do you recall which choice that you had made there? I'm pretty sure I told her to leave the agent alone. I chose not to go the Selena route there only because I wasn't sure if Waller knew the relationship between Batman and, and Catwoman yet. Because mm-hmm. I don't think they've ever made that clear, at least if Waller knew. But, I mean, she seems to know everything, so I figured it'd be best if I just didn't address it just in case. Uh, and I told her basically to back off the agent. But was that choice invalidated by her deal that she gives you like you had the choice to take the deal and she would leave or like get out of Gotham or did you go the step farther? Because that's when for me, I said, just leave and I didn't take the deal. Then the Joker freaks out and he starts to kind of be like her, you're letting her go. You know, the whole yes. thing. Yes. Yes. I had the same thing. Yep. Same outcome. So I think I'd love to like play this game completely different. You know, and just yes. be like choices on the other side. You at least watch a playthrough from somebody that's done this completely different than me. But this whole scene just plays out really well where you're you're trying to convince him, you're trying to convince a psychotic at this point, you know, about her leaving is good, she doesn't have to die, you know, things like that. And then your relationship with the Joker at that point changes based on what you say. And like you don't you're not really on Waller's side, at least I wasn't. I was still playing the middle ground trying to say, No, there's you can have this and that too. Mm-hmm. But it was just it was so well done with this scene. The just the way the passion that came through for the Joker, you know the yeah. villain inside him, you can get you can understand where he's coming from, you know? Yeah. Yeah. This is the moment that he's he starts to snap. Mm-hmm. Officially, you know, what goes off the deep end is during this scene, at least it was for me with the whole you know, go away, Waller, and he's like, "You're letting her go," and it's like, "Well, dude, it's either you know, I I turn you in, I give you in, or you know, all those other things going on." It's like that seemed to me at the time to be the best pliable option to go with and try to appease everybody at that moment because Waller knew I had her back to a corner, and this would keep the Joker safe and keep the agent safe, and that's just the road I took. But yeah, the, the way the Joker went from the childlike to just breaking down and seemingly losing faith in Batman again, which, I mean, it's happened a few times, but this one was just different the way it came off. Mm -hmm. So we have the fight that goes off in the roof. Joker goes crazy, throws bombs. Batman ends up falling through the GCPD roof and getting him picked up some rebar. Yeah. And then for me, Selina Kyle came and helped me out. I'm assuming it's probably the same for you. Yep, yep, same thing. She takes me back to the Batcave, and then you wake up, and Alfred is trying to tend to your wounds. And he's starting to get to the point where he's like, why are you doing this? You know? Yeah, yeah. He's just trying to talk some sense into you as Batman, just like, you're getting torn up, you're going to die. And you see him, you know, he's got his medical issue where his hand is shaking. And he's trying to talk to you about the Joker and be like, he's, is he a lost cause? Is he, what's going on here? How did you feel at that point? Were you starting to doubt the joker or would when you were playing through here did alfred start to talk some sense into you and try to get the get looking at it from his point of view like or did, did you still have hope that the joker would be okay so i i believe during this interaction well, i believe i know during this whole interaction uh alfred started talking a little bit of sense into me and i went kind of the neutral route. I didn't rally with Alfred and go, you're right. The Joker needs to be stopped. And I didn't say, no, the Joker's fine. And so I took that route of like, maybe there's still some chance left in him approach. So, I mean, Alfred wasn't thrilled by it, but he also wasn't completely like irritated. I kind of just said, I'm going to handle the Joker with kid gloves because he needed to be at that point. We knew he needed to be 
stopped or calmed down, however you want to phrase it. Like he, he needed to have some attention brought to him. But if you, I felt if I went too hard against him, that would just cause more issues and he'd go off even more so than he did. Cause you figure he loves Batman, he loves Bruce Wayne. And you know, he almost killed us as collateral damage at the GCPD. So, mm-hmm. so Alfred says, if you're going to do this, you need ha- you need some backup. You need some backup. Yes. And we get, um, I can't remember her first name. Tiffany. But, yeah. Tiffany. The daughter of um, Lucius. Oh, Lucius Fox. That's right. She comes in. She has her own suit up and everything. She's ready <laughs> yeah. to go in. I, I I had the same kind of reaction as Bruce did. Well, you get the option, right? Of you literally just got like brought into this team a minute ago, and you you're wanting to go out in the field now. You haven't had any training. Batman's yeah. trained for years before he went out. You know, there's no way. And so you're, you're given the option to let her assist you, like, from afar or be close by. And I'm assuming we both chose you can help out from afar, right? Ooh, no. No. I brought her in the field with me. Ah, so we do have a divergent path. Ooh. I wonder how, how that affected it, though. So Tiffany didn't seem too happy when I didn't let her do that. Like, she kind of had, like, that sad look on her face. And she I think she understood what's going on, right? But... Let's let's kind of talk about the Tiffany interactions that you had then from that. For me, um, she was from afar. We were at the crime scene, and the the flying thing was helping, and I don't know where she was. She was not on the scene, but did she accompany you to the crime scene then, do you recall? She did, but it sounds like it was basically the same interaction there because as we were investigating the, the crime scene, it was the drone doing all the work, but she was just there kind of giving some uh, – interactions back and forth with myself and with uh commissioner gordon i believe yeah because he was there too uh right. so there was some back and forth between her and him he goes oh you already got yourself another new partner he just he's like it seems like everybody knows who you are now kind of thing and it was one of those moments where, like commissioner gordon will remember that because he doesn't know right he doesn't know at this point who we really are right now no all right so yeah so he's like well you're apparently telling everybody else and kind of like one of those moments where, like well i don't know who you really are but all these other people do so mm-hmm. there's a little bit of that but it wasn't hostile or anything like that but she was just basically in the field but still doing probably the same stuff like you know letting the drone analyze the evidence and, and getting different views and stuff like that was all done by the drone but she was actually there with me so for me the only one walking around with me was the commissioner um and he didn't mention anything about that he apologized to me about the way he acted did he apologize yes. to you too okay yes he did yep yep and then Harley shows up, you know, she's got the, the backup of the agency, and they're going to lay waste to um, Bruce, pretty much, or Batman. But I think that was that point that Tiffany hacks the, the helicopter. Yep, yep. So she does the same for you, even though she's right there? Yes, yeah, she still hacks it, but she's there in person. Okay. So from here, we get to the point where we... We know that the Joker has um, people captive, right? In the Ace Chemicals plant. You got the mm-hmm. slow uh, walk-up shot that you can kind of go up there and you hear him talking to Waller, yelling. You know, you're, you're kind of just listening to what he's saying before you get to the door and you can listen to what's up. I loved that little walk-up. Oh, yes. It made, me, it made me remember Arkham, and that's a good thing. The Arkham yes, games. yes. So this scene is really good um, for... For me, again, the drone was here. It wasn't her, so she must have been with you here in this yep. scene. And he get he gets in there. You see him. You stop him from uh, killing Waller. And does how does that scene proceed? Do, do you talk sense into him? Does does he still try to like jump down and and uh, send his goons after you, or what's that scene play out for you? Yeah, he still sent the goons after me, so I had to fight one-on-one. And that's kind of where um, Tiffany kind of disappears, I want to say. She's not seen so much on, like, right next to you during this part, but you know that she's there because she talks to Bruce through the earpiece. Um, so, yeah, you kind of fend off the foes there. You know, you beat Joker's gang up, and then you continue to move on. Now, obviously, he still has Waller. Mm-hmm. And he's got the knife, and, you know, it's yep. pretty yep. pretty close to just taking her out. And yes. you're just having to try to talk to him about you know, how you differ from Waller, you know, how her methods aren't your methods and you're trying to talk him down, but he's like, no, you're the same and everything's yes. corrupt. And I idolized you. And he was basically going through that, that phase of anger, you know, the, the Sarah type protocol. 
Um, but then Tiffany comes in, you mm-hmm. know, because Waller uh, or Joker kept accusing Waller of killing Joker or killing Riddler. Riddler and yeah. everything was about how they lied and were trying to pin it on Joker. And Tiffany comes in out of nowhere and was like, no, nope, that was me. Yep. Yeah. I, I didn't care for that that much. No, I was I, uh, the way they developed the story, you kind of almost forgot about that point of like, well, gee, who killed Riddler? Like, you just kind of stop remembering that once you got past a couple episodes. And the way she just kind of dropped down was like, no, it was me. And then you're just like, really? It, it didn't make sense that she would have had that stuff timeline wise. Like, OK, you know, bomb goes off. Riddler kills her father that same night. She then develops this weaponry with the poison and, and shoot like it just seems way too fast paced for even somebody as smart as her, you know, bent on revenge to know, you know, who did it, track them down, have this weaponry made and then take them out all in one night. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, it was a it was a twist, but I didn't sure. like it. Yeah. Um. So here uh, John is beaten. He's on the catwalk. And he goes full Joker mode. He yep. he stabs some people um, with his knife, and he goes you know crazy psycho laugh. He's got the red all around his his mouth because of the blood splatter and everything. It was just full on Joker mode. Yep. Begins yep. the laugh, the maniacal everything. At this point, I'm just like, man, come on. What? I I thought we were hoping that we could avoid this and i'm curious if this could have been avoided some way i I don't know because it's like if he was i think the ending would have ended up the same because you figure even if he was not vigilante joker i feel like this boiling point at the end was going to be the same either way it had to but for but for us i think it was just more dramatic because we went from man we we like the joker we still have some hope for him and now at this point it's broken you're like well this is it he's He's Joker now. There's not Vigilant. He's just Joker. Mm -hmm. So I think if you had that dynamic going on throughout this whole episode where he was like that, I don't think it would be as impactful. But I think the the final twist where you know there's no hope left, I think that's where it had a little more impact there where he's just full on Joker, lost his mind. Like you said, very Arkham-esque. Right. And again, credit to – was it Troy Baker? No. Who's doing the voice of Joker here? The uh, voice actor for Joker, and this was Anthony in Gruber, it looks like. He's a Canadian actor, voice actor, and impressionist. So ah. he probably was channeling his inner Mark Hamill. Oh, yeah, for sure. He did a great job. I mean, he did. fantastic. Uh, you, you got lost in the performance. I uh, fully bought him in as the Joker. Um, what did you think of this Batarang fight that you had with him? Is that what, what transpired for you? You just yeah. throwing Batarangs at each other? Yep, yep. It was pretty cool. Like I said, the whole the whole design of his uh, Joker smile batarang things was pretty cool. Like it just he fully embraced the whole vigilante, but it still felt very Joker. Like we know he has all his little things, you know, the chattering teeth bombs, you know, stuff like that. It it still felt the same way, but Telltale did a good job of making it their own version, their own twist of it. So it wasn't just oh, this is Arkham Joker again, or this is a Joker we've seen before, or this is you know Heath Ledger Joker. It's this John Doe Joker is very much his own character on this. And they, they did nice touches. They paid a lot of attention to the details, I think. Mm-hmm. So the final climactic battle, we get into the top of this facility, um, and it looks like John's room, and he has the pictures of Bruce and him and the friendship up there. But you're continuing the fight. You just see that in the background. It was a very artistic way to be like where you were at, where you've come, a good way to remind you of, you know, things that have happened in the past in that relationship that you had. And you have this discussion here as you kind of fight each other to the, to the final end. And he's like, did you ever really, in, were you ever my friend? You know? Yeah. What'd you say? I said, yes. As I said, yes, I. we were friends. Yeah. As did I. And he was like, <laughs> you know, just dumbfounded, not dumbfounded, but he thought that that was like, what was the actual words that he used? Like you're crazier than I am or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I thought that was a good way to end that. Basically, oh, totally. that totally ends the Joker story as far as we're concerned from this point. He's now been caught or captured. The next scene is, you know, Batman in an ambulance, which is kind of funny. Uh, and then yeah. Waller and Gordon talking to each other outside the ambulance. With With this episode, or with this thing, I thought 
me and Walla were going to reconcile here, but there were a couple of words exchanged towards the end. I think I may have chosen the wrong wording, but by the end she was yelling at me again and we left on yes bad terms. Yeah. Similar situation for you. Yep, absolutely. And I had same thing. I don't remember what the choices were, but I remember whatever it was, I just completely set her off. The, even though I, I saved her, and I believe she thanks you for it, actually, too. Mm -hmm. But then just like the conversation afterwards, I'm just like, get out of the town, never come back, or whatever it was. And it just, you know, Amanda will remember mm -hmm. that. Yeah. So after that, um, Gordon is apologizing. You guys kind of reconcile, which I'm, I'm happy about. Mm -hmm. I want to see yes. more Batman and Gordon working together. Uh, and then you go to Tiffany and you, you confront Tiffany on the rooftop and she, you know, confesses to what's happened and it's your decision to see what happens next. Is, is she going to, uh, have to go pay for what she's done in the judicial system or is she going to have to pay it off being your, you know, Robin or whatever she ends up being here? Uh, what did you choose? I struggle with this one a little bit because I was like, well, you know, Batman doesn't kill, so he should not, you know, allow this stuff to happen without some retribution. But then in the back of my head, I was like, but, you know, Batman doesn't have a sidekick anymore. He doesn't have Joker now. Like, you know, what's going to happen here? And, she, you know, she lost her father and I can kind of understand and she didn't know what was going on. So I, I am making her pay it off as, as my sidekick and Batman's going to teach her the, the proper ways. Mm -hmm. I made the same choice with the rationale that the judicial system will make her think about what she's done, right? She'll make, they'll make them pay the time. But as Batman's protege or whatever, um, you can take that, You'll still be paying the time. You'll still be paying for what you've done. But you'll also be given the chance to do something good uh, as a result. So that's the, the rationale I chose to have her stay with me. That's a good point. I, I didn't think of it that way, but yeah, you're right. So still nothing justifies murder. She puts the robot flying thing on her back and flies away. Yep. And then we get to a difficult scene. Uh <laughs> Alfred and Bruce talking at the manor. Um, Alfred's bags are packed. He's ready to go. He's standing here outside your door. He hates to wake him up before he leaves. <laughs> but he's leaving on a jet plane. You don't know. Or, or a cab. Or a cab. Or I think cab. he took a cab. Yeah. You don't know when he's going to be back again. Maybe, maybe never. Um, so basically, Bruce is talking to him here. And... You you get the option to try to talk him out of going and saying, like, look, just, just take a vacation. You don't need to leave. Yep. You know, you have the option to maybe say that you can't do this without him, that he is your rock kind of thing. And he's like, well, that's what I'm afraid of. Yes. Uh, yeah. You know, so my conversation went away that he decided to leave. And you had the option to, as he's walking out the door say that you're going to stop being Batman or to continue being Batman. The choice you made, sir. Uh, continue being Batman. That is the choice that I made as well. That was, yeah. It was a tough choice, right? Yeah. I mean, we, we had that panic. I remember when we talked about the, the season one that we were panicked throughout the entire thing, whenever Alfred was put in harm's way and how he was acting and, you know, it seems like you and I both were like, no, he needs Alfred. So this scene when it was coming up, I'm like, no, 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 this, this, this can't end like this. You know, I was like, no, take a vacation, then come back. And I tried to say everything to make him stay, but not put the guilt on him that, you know, because mm -hmm. I knew that wouldn't work either. I tried to play it down the middle and it, he, like you said, he walked out that door anyway. And, but I couldn't then say, well, he's going to hang up the mantle because, I mean, if you do it that way, there's really no, se there's no possibility of a season three then, right? Mm-hmm. Well, it should just possibly. block you. It should just block you from playing it. Like, nope. You said you weren't Batman, unless you do it as Bruce the entire time. Oh, um, that's true. Because that could be a possibility. Mm -hmm. But so, I don't, the rationale I use too is the reason why he is Batman and the reason why he does it is is to do good, and he has done good. Yes, yes yep. he puts himself at risk, but it's one versus many. Um, and if he if you accept Alfred as staying, and you say you're not going to be Batman anymore. There's still going to be evil things that happen, but nobody doing anything about it. So that that many 
wins, you know, that many ways heavier than the one person's satisfaction. Yeah. The you, once you get to that point, you just can't hang up that mantle, unless unless you have a contingency, right? Yeah. And that's just the way I viewed that choice. That's true. Yep. And at this point, he has there's no contingency. There's no Nightwing there to to take up the mantle afterwards. There's nothing there. So. Mm-hmm. So. Let's let's look at our choices here that we have, uh, that we made from this this episode, um, and just to kind of go, we'll we'll give our overall review of this episode, and then as the season as a whole again after this, but with Harley Quinn. So, for me, she ended up as an agency asset. Um, you and fifty point zero, I'm sorry, fifty point one percent of players dismissed her importance to the agency. So. This kind of talks about Harley through the episodes. She was ecstatic with the heist that went off at Wayne Enterprises and went off without a hitch. She loved that Bane was left behind at the convoy raid, allowing her to take control of the pact. Harley felt a moment of sadness when you admitted your treachery, but still condemned you to death. Harley was heartbroken when you convinced John to subdue her. And while she still works for the agency, Harley worries... She is just another one of Waller's pawns. Yep, same same exact things. I think we made all those same choices. Nice. Um, so then, who is the next one that you have here? Uh, I have the Amanda Waller. So um, I have our director of the agency, Amanda Waller. You and forty point two percent of players remain in a stalemate with her. Uh, Waller was furious that you tampered with her witness after Riddler first resurfaced in Gotham. She appreciated you reaching out to her after your first fight with Bane. Waller was beyond angry when you blew your cover with the pact. She declared that you an enemy of the state for siding with John Doe and the Gotham Bridge. And though your stalemate with Waller stands, she left Gotham as your enemy. Hmm. So for me, she was pleased that you endorsed her authority by interrogating Riddler, uh, Riddler's henchman at the GCPD. Um, and then I can't remember what you said for your second one, but she appreciated you were reaching out to her after your first fight with Bane. Yep, same. So I think that was our only divergent was that first uh, choice there. I think so, yeah. So our next one was Mr. Jim Gordon. We're partners. And mine says, You and 59.6% of players accepted Gordon's apology. Gordon was humbled that you would trust him with your secret association with Lucius Fox. When you interrogated Eli behind his back, Gordon felt betrayed, declaring your partnership over. He was bitter that you were still relying on Waller to help you after Bane's initial attack, and Gordon was disgusted that you hid or that you sided with the criminal Catwoman instead of the law. And finally, he was grateful when you forgave him for losing his self-control and letting Waller get to him. Ah, uh, see, so we we differed a little here. Um, my second one was when Waller berated you for tampering with their witness, Maury. Gordon supported you, uh, and then he was hurt when you called Waller instead of him to help you after Bane's initial attack. But everything else was the same. Nice. How about Catwoman? So Catwoman, I have her as agency asset still. Uh, you and thirty five point one percent of players made no deal with Waller on Selena's behalf. Uh, after her return to Gotham, Selina was relieved when you said you thought redemption was possible. After you neglected to warn her about a GCPD ambush, Selina felt on edge around you. She was honored to be invited into the Batcave, your secret sanctum. Selina was horrified that Harley sentenced you to death when you blew cover with the pact, and you left Catwoman's fate up to Waller, and she reluctantly serves on the agency cover task force. I wish I could Covert change that force. last one. but uh... Yeah, me too. I know. So the only difference we have was for that second point, she was touched that you went against Gordon to warn her about the nah, GCPD. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That that last one though, I wish I would have made changes to that one so that she's not an agency asset. I that's gonna I might have to play through this again just to get a better ending for her. Yeah. I, no. I don't want her fate to be in Waller's hands. You know what I mean? Nope. I'm I'm with you there too. So next we have a man of Vesta. Agent Vesta. Uh, nope. I have Tiffany Fox. Oh, oh, you're right. I skipped one. Okay. So she um, is protege, Tiffany Fox. Mm-hmm. You and 80.6% of 
players took Tiffany under your wing. Tiffany felt betrayed when you admitted your involvement in Lucia's death. She was worried for you when you told her to hide while you helped Harley steal the Phalanx key. After she realized that you were working with the agency, she regretted calling the GCPD on you. She was at first confused, but then completely blown away when you told her that you were Batman. Now Tiffany is repenting for the murder of Riddler under your watchful mentorship. Yep, the exact same things with her. Nice. I don't think we, yeah, I think every single one we had with her was, uh, we were in step there. Mm -hmm. So now, Avesta. Yes, now we have Avesta. So I have her as COO of Wayne Enterprises. You and 54.9% of players asked her to come work for you. Avesta was traumatized by Riddler's game and the loss of her hearing. She was thankful you let it slide when she admitted she revealed your secret identity to Waller. Avesta was intrigued that you trusted John Doe to find Harley after she escaped Sanctus. And after helping you blackmail Waller, Avesta is hopeful about her new position at Wayne Enterprises. So the first point's the only difference for me. Avesta felt guilty for having survived Riddler's game when her partner Blake didn't. Ah, okay. So remember I... I made a choice, and I, I remember talking about that, and I thought I had another chance before anybody died. But That's right. Yep, yep. Yeah. So, Alfred Pennyworth. Parts unknown, Alfred Pennyworth. You and 58% of players let Alfred go rather than giving up Batman's crusade. That's a more even split than I thought it would be, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, I agree. After he watched the footage of Lucius' violent demise, Alfred was filled with vengeance. When you told Tiffany your secret, Alfred was relieved. He no longer had to keep it from her. After collapsing in the Batcave, Alfred felt reassured when you agreed that he needed a vacation. He soon became gravely concerned by Batman's continued influence by or on the vigilante Joker, and Alfred left Wayne Manor anguished that your crusade against criminals would consume you all the same do you think he's gone for good i hope not <laughs> uh if he does come back though i feel it's going to be a mid to end season reveal if they even do because they haven't said they're doing a season three yet so we don't even know if there's going to be a continuance but if there is i i think he will be back but it's going to be a little bit later in the game it's not going to be right off the bat we're like I'm back from my vacation, Master Bruce. Like, it's not going to be like that at all. Right. So, all right. So, John Doe, what do you got? So, fallen friend John Doe, you and 54% of players told Joker you were still friends. When he found you at Lucius's funeral, John was thrilled when you agreed to meet his friends. He was proud that he brought you into the pact, resulting in a successful raid on the agency convoy. John was shocked when you blew your cover with Harley invi inviting her wrath. After you busted him in the fun house, John devoted himself to helping you clean up Gotham, Gotham and Joker thinks you're as crazy as he is for considering yourselves friends. Mine is the same, except you said busted him in the fun house. Do you mean trusted? Yes, I do. Sorry. Okay. I was like, well, that was different, <laughs> but everything else is the same. So I just wanted to make sure that there was no difference yeah. there. Nope. Nope. No difference. So... As far as the episode choices here, did you save Agent Willie or Agent Harrison? You and 70% of players saved Willie. Yep. 14.5% um, of players hesitated during Bane's attack. And then 15.4% of players saved Agent Harrison. Nobody liked Agent Harrison. No, no. What about that next stat? So next one I have, this is where we differ, though. Uh, did you take Tiffany into the field with you? Uh, you and 77.4% of players took F Tiffany out into the field. It looks like at the time when I played it, 22.6% did not. Yep, and ours is different. Uh, the next one, did you agree with the hand over the Joker to Waller? You and 68.5% of players refused to hand over a Joker to Waller. Mm-hmm, same. Uh, so the next one was, did you give up the cowl so Alfred would stay? You and 58% of players chose to never give up being Batman. 5.7% of players refused to hear Alfred's last words. 36.3% of players told Alfred you would give up being Batman, which I can't believe almost 40% of people said they'd give up being Batman. Mm -hmm. Always be the Batman. Yeah. Uh, which Joker did you defeat? You and 55.1 defeated Vigilante Joker. I can't believe that number is that high. I mean, is that low, mm -hmm. rather? Because I, you and I played handled the Joker very similarly, 
that I can't see that many people being like mean to John Doe to drive him to that point where he wasn't the vigilante one. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know, like if people are just cold hearted or they just wanted to see Joker go bad. I don't know. I had a hard time doing that in this. I felt they empathy treated the towards Joker him. like the Joker. They didn't treat him like a fresh option. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Which, I mean, everything we've learned in these telltale games, uh, especially, you know, season one, the penguin, that was a very different penguin from what we've ever seen uh, the penguin be. Um, so I went into this one thinking the same thing. Well, Hey, these characters, even though I know of them, they could be very different from what we're used to. Mm-hmm. So I gave him his chances being a, you know, different person. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's talk about this episode as a whole. What it, what's your overall uh, consideration of this episode? We'll get to the season in a second, and then give me a rating for this one. Okay, so this season overall, I, like we mentioned, I think it did a good job of tying up the loose ends of the story so it closed with definitive answers to everything there wasn't really a cliffhanger per se there was a stinger which we'll i guess we'll talk about that after but all loose ends got tied like you know where everybody stands like that is very clear there's very few people left out into the the abyss if you will um voice acting was great once again no technical issues so this season i think they polished a lot more uh than last season which you know i only had one issue then last season anyway but i mean there were no hiccups there was no long delays there was no issues at all whatsoever playing uh this on ps4 standard edition i didn't have the pro um i had no issues whatsoever so it, it was a good job i think overall uh do you want to do the number for the, this specific episode yeah go for this specific episode <sighs> this specific episode i'm going with 85 um, like I said, I was happy with the way things went and where the story goes. It closed everything off. I think the twist with Tiffany was a little cheap um, and it's completely selfish, but I also had to deduct some points for Alfred leaving. <laughs> <laughs> Just because I don't want that. Right. Uh, for me, this episode was, it was good, not great. Um, mm-hmm. And I, I mean, But the Joker's performance and writing and story really transcends everything else that, you know, Mm -hmm. I want to knock for this episode. It was just so fun seeing him swing in and, you know, seeing everything with with him and the way that turn happens, then him becoming the Joker that we know about. Um, And then, like, the interplay still between you and him. Like, this is a really compelling way to build a villain. Yes. Uh, And it's, it's interesting to see, like, from the perspective of Bruce now, in this episode, that turn, it was, it's impossible probably not to get that turn to him go against you because you were vigilante Joker. I mean, I'm sure the other one was probably villain Joker or something. I don't know. Um, but I I just, the way that they, they wrote this story and the way it played out was just really, really well done. The voice acting, like you said, between um, the Joker's voice and Batman was just, it was heartfelt. And it was, it was a, yeah. it wasn't, you know, out of body or it didn't it didn't break me from the the reality of the game and i really enjoyed how it just flowed really well together and the choices again no technical issues for me either Mm -hmm. um the the tiffany thing stupid i didn't care for it that much just kind of shoehorn that in as far as i'm concerned Mm -hmm. i I feel like somebody was like oh let's try this (laughs) and then they did it um you know the the tough choice at the end, like very tough choice with Alfred. I mean, you've you've grown to love that character across the seasons, uh, and you know, just I think inherently, we as Batman comic book fans have uh, a love for Alfred. Um, yeah, you know, just that consummate guidance, that mentor, that counselor for Batman, um, and to see him, to see him give this ultimatum, it hurt. Uh, you, but you understand it. You understand why, and you understand that, you know, if he is his father, he has mm-hmm. to look out for Bruce. He, he doesn't have to look out for Gotham, right? You know, he has to look out for his boy, for the the one that he's raised uh, for so long, and it it's heart wrenching, and it was a tough choice. Like, do you do you give it up? Do you try to salvage that relationship? But you know, in the end, you you'll probably resent him for it. And I don't see it going well. And you know, it's that the, the many versus the few type mentality and the thought when you have to come down and just kind of 
think about it and make that decision. So it was a it was a good way to end this um, particular season with that yeah. choice. Mm-hmm. And I just feel like this episode, just for the Tiffany stuff, I have that bugged me a little bit. And then the the oddity with Waller, and she just kind of turns into you again. But the reconciliation with Gordon, and yeah, this is good. this is at least in ninety. I'm gonna go like ninety two. Like you'd be okay. a little odd. It's like ninety two. <laughs> um, and I was wavering up until a little bit ago. I was like, you know, is this how is this? But really, that that Joker performance in this story it was so good. Was so good. At. Yeah, yeah. So the season as a whole. All right, so season as a whole, um, we've talked about, I think, the story overall amongst all the chapters was well done. But there were some big flaws for me here. Um, As we saw in season one, the twist on a lot of the villains was cool and welcome. They did the same thing here where this was a very different Riddler than we'd ever seen before as well. Um, Mr. Freeze was a big lump of nothing. And that kind of disappointed me because I was so excited to see him included in the season. And he turned out to be very much a non-factor in the overall story at all. And you don't even know where he left off. Like, they kind of give you the resolution. But it's, I mean, he's probably under custody from the agency. But why are they using all the others as assets except for him? I think for him, he could be, like, seed planning for the next series. That's true. That's true. Because, like, Selena comes back and some of the people come back from the first uh, series. And mm. I, I would hope, and again, we can talk about what we want to see next, but we see more from him. I, I hope so, because that, that that let me down. I was excited to see him there, and, and the few interactions we had were interesting enough to me, and I was like, okay, I want to see where this goes, and it was, just, it was over with him before it really got started. Uh, you had more interactions with Bane, who wasn't really that different from pretty much every other Bane we've seen. Um that I was more intrigued by Mr. Freeze's character than his. Um, the thing with Tiffany kind of irked me a little bit. I think we're going to see hopefully, well, actually I should say what we want to see for next season. So I'll hold those thoughts there. Uh, overall, I'm a little torn as to whether or not I like this season better than last season, uh, only because of the couple dips in the story. Um, I'm going to go with a 90 for the overall season. 90 overall is pretty good. 9 yep. out of 10. Yep. So for me, this season, again, goes back to that whole Joker storyline and that whole yep. fabric that they weaved the entire time uh, and also introducing the, you know, the issues with Alfred and his, his health was ailing and bringing that whole story together and the interplay between you and Gordon and Waller and all that dynamic was was pretty well done. And there were times in this in this season that I laughed quite a bit. Um, the writing was good. The Joker had some jokery lines. And there were just some, some great times. And it enjoyed... Uh, or it pulled you in and made the enjoyment better. And, again, no issues technically for me at all during this uh, playthrough. And I feel like there was a good balance... Uh, between Bruce and Batman. Like, there were some times when you had to be Bruce for, like, almost a whole episode. Yeah. But yeah. as a whole, in the season, it, wor- it worked well, and it was a good balance for the season. So, for me, I mean, Joker stuff and the Bane and uh, the whole storyline, and there were some good cliffhangers, too, like when Brat or Bratman... Batman was frozen in that. Uh, yes, that was good. For cliffhanger. Yeah. Yep. There were some good points where you're like, oh man, I want to see what's next now. And for all that, I think that this is definitely, in my mind, better than the first series. And I think I'm a little bit higher on this one than you are. And I'm going to tell you that by my number here in a second. But <laughs> uh, this one definitely did it for me as far as the story with the Joker goes. I was not disappointed. Uh, right. I was not let down at all, uh, you know, when we were introduced to him in the first series to this, where we are now, was very compelling and worth it for any Batman fan to, to go through and experience this story. So for me, this is a 95. Wow. Okay. I enjoyed it immensely. Yeah, I, I, I'm with you on all of the Joker stuff completely. It just those couple things that kind of hit shallow for me deducted some away but mm-hmm. i totally get your points yeah 
Yeah, I mean, not to forget, like, the the death of Lucius, you know, at the, the beginning. Yeah, yeah. That hit hard, too, in the funeral scene and everything. It was just, it was all, there was a lot that happened. And definitely, I feel like this is this is high up there for me. So, after the credits, there's a stinger where Bruce goes to visit Joker in the asylum or wherever he's at. What do you make of that? I'm not sure. Um... It's almost – this is kind of where I'm torn a little bit. I love – and, I mean, you said the same thing to you. love the, the iteration of this Joker and what they did with him. But I feel like it should be done for now and not carry over into the next season. Only because we've seen him every single step of the way. Let's go outside and to do more with the Bat universe um, if possible. But I'm also intrigued as to why would you show up like right after – all this just went down. Like there's no time to pass. There's no giving Joker time to think about what he's done and maybe come to his senses a little bit. If for some reason, Bruce still think there's hope out there for Joker, why he'd visit him that quick right after. And I mean, the Joker right away was like smiling, you know, you came back kind of expression on his face. And it's like, all right, so there's no animosity at all towards Bruce Wayne, which seems odd as well after what went down. So it's almost, it almost cheapens the the resolution of the story by almost hitting reset and saying like, Oh no, it's okay. They both are still going to talk to each other. And Joker was not mad. And Bruce is there obviously for a reason. So I, I don't know where they're going with it, but it seemed to cheapen the end just a little bit for me. So for me, I thought it was a interesting end for him to go visit after that whole battle and that disagreement that they had, but it didn't really cheapen it for me. You don't really know how much time has elapsed. Uh, right, that's there's true. There's no indication. Um, but I do think that it, I, I agree with you in the fact that, okay, we've had the Joker story. Let's let him stew a little bit in the asylum and let's bring in some of the other heavy hitters from the Batman universe um, where we can kind of look at that next time where he works with Gordon and they put more people away. And then maybe towards the end of that season, the Joker escapes or something. Right. Um, but that's kind of what I, I think that this leads to in the future is that there's going to be another confrontation between the two of them, and it's going to be, you know, villain slash vigilante Joker trying to think that he's doing the right thing, and he's reformed, and he's, you know, mm-hmm. doing things the way that Batman would do them, but he's really not. Uh, I think that's what that leads to in the future. But in the more near term for, like, a season three in the beginning, I want to see him working with, with Gordon. I want to see him, you know, there's a Firefly on the loose, and he's he's hunting down Firefly or something like that, you know? Uh, I'd like to see those type of storylines take place. I'd love to see the Clock King or the Mad Hatter uh, take yes. place in this. Uh, those Somebody some, different, totally. Exactly. Yeah. Those would be some good, compelling stories. And especially with Telltale, doing a Mad Hatter story would be fantastic. Ooh, yeah. So that's what I would love to see is something along those lines. Uh, for the future for Batman for you, what are you looking forward to or what would you want? All right. So there's a couple things that were bouncing around my head after it's all said and done. The choices we made is... I'm I'm wondering what's next for Miss Fox. Is she going to be quote unquote Robin or is she going to be Oracle? And the only reason like gut instinct I would say is well she'd make a good Oracle because of her her tech and she can use the drones and whatnot. But then I was trying to figure in where Agent Avesta fit in too. Because she's obviously working for Bruce in our storylines. So she could also potentially fill in a um uh, why am i blanking on the name now my god oracle role Mm -hmm. uh by viewing from afar and giving him intel or whatever like that because of her background as well so it's it it seems like you know bruce definitely is going to need people especially with alfred gone and and i think these two hopefully are gonna be the ones he leans on and they don't try and just you know shoehorn somebody new into the into the role and kind of be that, that person out of nowhere when he has these two at his disposable along with Gordon, which I think is going to come over time. I do think they're going to continue to drag out Gordon, not knowing who Batman is for a while. I don't, I don't, and I don't know why, because you know, the trust is there, Mm -hmm. but I I feel like for some reason, they're just not going to pull that mask off this soon. Um, with like you, I would love to see a villain. We haven't seen a a ton of, Uh, I think after you said Mad Hatter, I'm like that, that's perfect. Um, that'd be a great one. Um, you could even go the, the route of like a dead shot or have something like that there too. Um, but I think if I got to pick any villain, uh, 
I think I'd be all over Mad Hatter to be honest. I think it would fit very well with what Telltale does. You can have an intriguing story there, um, and their twist on all the characters. For the most part, I've liked them all, um, and I think we're going to see Harley come back. Um, I don't think Harley's done by any means. I mean, she's too popular of a character anyway uh, to just sweep her under the rug. And maybe, who knows, maybe that's why Bruce goes to see the Joker, because Harley's back and he needs Joker's help. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's kind of where I, I I hope it's at least going. I don't know anything, obviously. I mean, like I said, we haven't even gotten confirmation that season three is coming. Uh, I certainly hope it does, because I've, I've loved these games. But I also, at the same time, a little cautious only because... I know far less people that played this season than season one. Right. And I don't know if it's because people are telltaled out or it's just, I don't know, it didn't seem to garner as much hype this time around. So it sounds like we both really enjoyed this and we're both looking forward to the future of what Telltale will bring to the Batman universe. Um, as far as Telltale's games that we know that are coming, uh, I don't have they announced much as far as what uh, latest they're working on currently? Walking Dead. Okay. Which I believe is the the last one. I think they're calling it the last one. Uh-huh. Um, I think that's the only one I've heard, actually. I don't think they've confirmed anything. I mean, maybe we'll see some stuff come out at E3. That's what I'm thinking. Um, we might get another Guardians, um, or we might get uh, some more. I think they're working on Minecraft, maybe season two right now. Are they really? Well, I think so. I believe that one episode has has released already, maybe two. So there's still oh, work um, on that. The Wolf Among Us season two for ah, 2018. Yes, for 2018 fantastic. supposedly. So yeah, Walking Dead season four and Wolf season two for 2018. But that's all they've announced so far. Okay, and the Wolfenstein team is the one that made Batman. So we probably won't see Batman for a little while. Well, no, Wolfenstein was made by Bethesda. I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> the Wolf it's Among Legos. Us. <laughs> yes, Wolf Among Us team. Um, so I'm definitely jazzed for what Wolf Among Us will do. Kevin, uh, I'm going to put you in the spot. What do you think? Do you want to make a pact? Do you want to be cut from the same stitch? And shall we... Shall we do this again for The Wolf Among Us Season 2? Oh, I think so. And I think we might actually be able to get others to participate in this in Wolf, because I know a lot of more people will be excited for that. But, yeah, I'm definitely down for that. Uh, I am purchasing – I know you, I think you've already played all the Guardians, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm going to be purchasing that because it's on sale on Xbox for, ten, for $10 this week. So I'm going to buy it for Donnie and myself nice. so we can – play through that and catch up because uh i do enjoy these games and it doesn't take a whole lot to get through them and i think it'd be nice i don't think i've ever played one where the whole season was done so i can just kind of tear right through them Mm -hmm. uh so this will be a different experience but i do want to i do want to see even though i know people are a little bit torn on it but yeah i say for wolf among us too let's let's do it sounds good you heard it here first ladies and gentlemen so with that thank you kevin for joining where can people find you uh, you can find me on Twitter at PSVG Kevin and on like all of the things on the PlayStation uh, Podcast Network. E three's coming, so on the PlayStation the, Podcast Network, the PlayStation. Yes, <laughs> I didn't PlayStation. know that, that we uh, changed that far. Someone's yes. gonna let the Empire know. Yes, yes, no. PlayStation Video Games Podcast Network, PSVG. Um, yeah, E three's coming, so there's gonna be a whole lot of content coming your way, guys. You know what we do during E three. It's all hands on deck, so uh, stay tuned for more. Sounds good. And you can find me on Twitter at Voiced by Nathan. And you know what? That's that's all I got to say. Vo- voice Ed by Nathan? Voice Ed by Nathan. Thanks, Sean Capri. Uh, Hi, Sean. Sean Hi, Hi, Dave. Pants. Hey, Dave. Hi, Xbox. Hey, Dave. Hi, Hi, Microsoft. Hi, Microsoft. Hi, Sean. Put on the brakes. Put it, put it into cruise control. One large coffee, two sweeteners. <laughs> that's right. Debit, I, debit, please. Debit, I, please. On debit. I really <laughs> hope they listen to this. This is my favorite debit. show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sean. Yeah, follow Sean. If if you listen to the show, tweet at Sean Capri. Sean like Connor Capri like the prant. Capri like the prant. prant. <laughs> he does not prance around. I have you no know, sir. <laughs> That'd be great. Uh, anyway, send him a tweet and tell him uh, that you heard about him on Batman <laughs> the Telltale Podcast. Uh, the season two episode five uh review cast for psvg so ladies and gentlemen boys and girls gamers alike this has been the batman telltale season two 
review cast. Thank you for listening. Thank you for joining us on this journey. And we will catch you guys next time. has been a production of the Play Some Video Games Podcast Network. Find more great content at playsomevideogames.com We hope you've been entertained. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I got nothing.